the love matters, not the object. There are two things, the love that is an energy and the subject and object. We give importance on the object or the subject and forget about love as the energy. In the process of love and lovingness, something invisible happens between the lover and the beloved. This is what indeed matters, neither the lover, the subject, nor the beloved, the object. In the process of love, the lover is the painter and beloved is the canvas and all that happens between the painter and the canvas is the love. On the canvas, emotions, feelings from deep within the recess of your being flow to complete the eternal painting. This is important to understand. On the canvas, emotions, feelings from deep within the recess of your being flow to complete the eternal painting. That which is the object of love is immaterial. The loved one is just an excuse. The loved one has given an opportunity to open up the doors of this unfathomable reservoir to flow incessantly. The real objective is that because of the beloved, the river of love that has up to now been blocked within the lover may start flowing. This you have to understand. The river of love that has up to now been blocked within the lover may start flowing because of the river. The fountain that has for so long been covered begins to spring up again. All that has obstructed the flow may be removed now. In the process, the beloved acts as an instrument that clears away these rocks and the water of love begins to spring forth. The fountain is within and once the flow starts, you will clearly understand that it is not dependent on the beloved. It is your own nature and it is you who have been preventing the flow of this fountain by blocking it with the ropes. The presence of the beloved was a help. The blocks have been removed. The rocks got cleared away and now the fountain of love flows without any limits. For this to happen, not only beloveds are necessary, it can flow to your work through the act of creativity or whatever you are doing with totality. This is Tantra vision. The emphasis in Tantra vision is that there has to be a feeling, a wise own feeling that we are looking for, the young feeling. Saraha, the Tantric Master, the Buddhist Master, was the vision of a black old woman and found that she has to be his teacher. I had the experience of this wise woman in the form of my grandmother. She gave me the Tantra vision just by answering one question. What is my religion? The question was very simple. And the answer is very simple if you are wise. If you are not, then it can cripple you for your entire life and will close all the doors for the flower to blossom. Her response was, Your religion is the same as that of God. No one but a wise woman can answer this question. I am born in a Hindu family, brought up from the very birth 
in a Sufi environment where there is no room for any rituals of any kind? She could have very easily answered that I am born in a Hindu family, so I am a Hindu or I am being brought up in a Sufi family, so I am Sufi, but she did not say any of such things. Instead, she answered, your religion is the same as that of God. When I inquired further, what is the religion of God? She said, you ask too many questions that you have to discuss. This was a beginning of a journey, beginning of a journey of self inquiry Whether it begins with who am I or what is my religion, you will reach to the same source. And this is Tantra Vishnu. In the process of love, the presence of the Beloved is a help. The rocks got cleared away and now the fountain of love flows without any limits. If your path is love, then you must be prepared to be there. Then who the love is flowing for is not the question. Love is flowing from you irrespective of the object. Irrespective of the object, it must be. Then who the love is for is not the question. The image of Krishna or the image of Jesus or anything else will be or even an unsculptured piece of a stone will be. Once a man went to a Sufi and told him, I want to find God. The Sufi replied, the search is very difficult. To find God, you will have to make a great leap. So the first you begin by practicing small jumps. The seeker further inquired, how do I take a small jump? What was the answer Sufi gave? Love someone with life. Love is the first jump that you can take to see God. Practice this small jump and then eventually you will be able to take the ultimate leap into God, in which you will be utterly dissolved into the infinite void with no trace of you remaining. But in your so called love, you remain the most dominant fact. You, the evil. Those who come to look for you will not find even your ashes, that is the final jump. But you will have to wait a while before you are ready for that ultimate jump. It requires great courage, so start with shorter jumps. The seeker replied, but I love nobody. All I have been thinking so far is how to get rid of my wife and children so that I can seek God in the earnest or follow some other path. And I have always avoided giving anybody so much as a loving glance because I was afraid that love will leave me. And I have always avoided giving anybody even so much as a loving glance, because I was deaf that love will lead me into bondage. Certainly love becomes bondage if there is ego with me. With ego projecting love, it becomes bondage. But if there is no ego with me, then who is there to be bound? Love will certainly become your bondage if the one who can be bound is present to it. That I, the giver, I love my wife so much, 
I love my husband so much. This is the cause of my bondage. So when love begins to encircle you from all sides, then you will naturally begin to get uneasy with you. In fact, as long as the eyes here, love cannot be. You may call it love, but it will not be. I and love can never exist together. In the presence of I, all that we call love is only a desire, a longing, passion and attachment. Remember this from us. In the presence of I, all that we call love is only desire, longing, passion and attachment. As long as ego is there, love remains binding and there is darkness all around, both inside and outside. We have called passion animalist. You are probably not aware of the meaning of the word, the Hindi word for animalistic is Pashvik. That comes from the word Pashu, which means that which is tied. All animals are tied. Pash means the binding rope, and Pashvik means to be tied. Love can be a freedom. Pashu does not mean only animal. It means anyone who is tied. And the only one who can be tied is the one who is eternally tied. You cannot tie me in any relation, bondage or anything. For me it is when you are in front of me, everything that is possible is done. When you are gone, you exist no more finish, because I have done all that was possible to me. Lovers cannot bind or be bound. Hence those who have known love have called it ultimate freedom. They say that love is liberation. In love you dissolve, so who is there to be bound? But in passion you cannot dissolve. In desire you cannot dissolve. You will remain dominant. Even if bonds are there, they will merely hang in the wall. Who is there to be bound? And if you try to put the void in bondage, you will end up putting knots in the rope of sin, as there is no one to be found with you. So this seeker said to the Sufi, I have lived always in great fear of love, always avoiding it, because love is bondage. And what is this you are teaching me to love? I have never loved anyone. Sufi replied, Think this over carefully, because to find anywhere a man who has never loved anyone is impossible. No matter how much he may have tried to avoid, love is your nature. So close your eyes and try to remember. The seeker thought long and finally said, Well, if you are really asking me, I have to confess that I have a cow for whom I feel a little affection. That will be said to the Sufi. The another word used for Sufi is Fakir. And this word Fakir is very important. It comes from the syllable Fe means Haka means to live without food. So it is a beautiful word. That will be said to Fakir. This cow of yours will become your first lesson in jumping. Go and love your cow wholeheartedly. That is why I said the object is not important. Anything that helps you to remove the rocks around the reservoir, 
from where love can spring forth will do. And that is the only way to take the first jump. If you love your musical instrument, if you love your cooking, if you love your painting, you have to love someone or something. The cow of yours will become your first lesson in jumping. Go and love your cow wholeheartedly. Let her occupy all your attention. Let your every pore be possessed by her. Cow when you stand up, cow when you sit down, cow when you walk, cow when you talk, let your pore be the filled with cow. This is madness that you are teaching, said the seed. What will people say? This is just insanity. Any time when you ask one of your participants in meditation, she only talks about dishes, what she cooks, what she's going to cook, and how to mix this with that. Nothing occupies her mind, thoughts, except how to create a new dish. This is her love. She poured her entire energy into it. This is madness that you are teaching. Said the seeker, what will people say? This is just insanity. Yes, replied the Sufi, love is always insanity. And God, in the form of love, showers only on those who are ready to be insane and ecstatic. So go now and try this. And it is said that through this cow alone, the seeker found God. He never needed to return to the Sufi to ask what jump to take next. Looking deep into the eyes of the cow, drowning in them again and again, he recognized the eyes of And certainly, cow has that eye. This is why Hindus are called cow mothers. Eyes as innocent as those of the cow are hard to find anywhere else. Very innocent eyes. Every human eyes are not so innocent. They are pure. They are as cloudless as sky. Try sometimes standing near a cow with your heart full of love, looking into her eyes and immediately you will feel that love in the cow's heart arising because the cow is not conditioned by the society. The cow has not been taught to be moral. She has no discrimination like mine and not mine. There is no calculating in intellect to weigh the pros and cons. When I was growing up, we had a cow at home and it was a beauty to look into her eyes. I am speaking of my own experience. The cow is pure heart, so if you have any heart within you, she will immediately start transmitting waves of love towards you. And this is what the Sufi told us. You will be surprised to know that there is great research going on now into the emotional life of plants. If you think the cow's love is remarkable, then what to say about plants? Just stand by the side of a plant to love you, and the plant will begin to transmit love waves towards you. But amidst all this awareness is for you. Awareness is the key. Those who love to remain in the garden by the plants, they can see God also, they can attain to meditativeness, but in the absence of awareness, it will not be. One of these researchers has invented instruments which, if it connected to plant, plot a graph of plants' palpitation. 
just as an electrocardiogram plots the heartbeat of a man. The scientists found that if a man who feels love for the plant stands nearby, touches and caresses the plant, feels happy to be near the plant. The plant's graph changes and it can be seen from the changes that the plant is feeling at the moment the gardener approaches with sears in his hand, the graph changes immediately. Even though he has not actually used the sears and is only approaching, and the plant's open, plant's palpitation changes. As the gardener begins to cut the plant, it is not only the particular plant's graph which changes, but the graph of all other plants nearby also changes, because they too feel the trauma of the plant that is being cut. This scientist was even more amazed to discover that the plants were disturbed not only by the cutting of other plants, their pain being reflected in the graph but reacted also with pain when a chicken was killed close close by us and he found that the matter went even further than this. If a man who cut the plant or killed the chicken approached again the plant next time the graph of the plant indicated their suffering. They are even aware of the approach of the dangerous man. Even after months, the graph of these plants would express their anxiety at the approach of this man. Plants are far less developed life form than animals. So you can imagine the love that you could share with a cow or with a dog. Search deep into her eyes and she will become a dog on the outside of which is written love and on the inside it is written meditation. If love is your path, if love is your thirst, your life is time, then love anyone, any. So go deeply and fully into it. Only then is the transformation possible. If you seek to save yourself in any way from drowning deep into it, you will never be liberated or attain to salvation or reward. If love holds no attraction for you, there is no need for you to feel discouraged then meditation is your path and you should be alone and dive deep into yourself. If you cannot immerse yourself into the other, then sink into yourself. These are only two possibilities. Either you dissolve into yourself or in the other. The ultimate will happen. The ultimate will happen.